El Faba is a name on TikTok you've likely heard before. The 19-year-old British trans woman had amassed over half a million followers on TikTok before being banned, and they're known for a variety of controversies that they've been involved in over the last couple of years. What is the one thing that you regret saying the most online? The one thing I regret the most is I think I regret about the Tourette's thing. So I said I had Tourette's uneducatedly, so what I remember saying I had Tourette's, I shouldn't have said that. A few of these controversies include El Faba faking Tourette's and autism on TikTok Live. I lied about being diagnosed with autism, correct? And that's damaging. They would also go around their local town and spread scabies. It's not the coronavirus. Scabies cannot kill you. I am entitled to go where the f I want, thank you very much. Because I will not be sat in a box and be controlled by people and be told what to do like a f***ing child. And the worst of all of them is Alphaba's attraction to minors on Discord. All of these things and many more will be covered in today's video. I can't fucking do it anymore. This is the deranged story of El Faba. El Faba Orion Doherty was born on February 11th, 2004. Not much is known about her early life previous to TikTok other than speculations of her mother drinking while pregnant, leaving El Faba here with fetal alcohol syndrome. As a young boy, he was taken to see a performance of the Broadway musical, Wicked. This would inspire a lifelong obsession with the musical itself and the main character of the Broadway show, El Faba the Wicked Witch of the West. Orion began harboring dreams of becoming a West End performer, specifically as the role of Elphaba. Gravity, I'm flying on fire. Gravity, and at 17 years old, Orion would come out as a trans woman and adopt the name of his idol, Elphaba. This leads us to the rise of Elphaba's notoriety on TikTok. Like any aspiring thespian in this day and age, Elphaba would begin posting performances on TikTok Live. Unlike most of the characters we cover here on this channel, Elphaba loved the attention that would come from these cringy videos she would post. Elphaba actually enjoyed the limelight so much that she would go out in public and perform the song Defying Gravity upwards of 50 times a day. Defying Gravity is the song performed by the character Elphaba in the Broadway musical performance. So it's no surprise this would be TikTok Elphaba's go-to performance for both the online and real world to see. Elphaba would end up garnering a sizable following from these cringy but harmless posts and would really be thrown into the limelight when she would be attacked on TikTok Live one day. During one of her many Defying Gravity street performances, Locals would snatch Elphaba's wig off her head, resulting in this video. Why do you find it funny to hurt someone oh like that? Can I wear it? Can we move? Can we go, please? Can we please, please? Please, please? Can we please? Can you go, please, please? I am. Please. 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 <laughs> Following this incident, Elphaba would gain a lot of sympathy from British TikTok Zoomers. And if you're unlike me and have a little bit of a heart, it's probably easy to feel sympathy for a young, mentally ill person just trying to live their life. But I promise you, as this story goes on, any ounce of sympathy you will have for this person will slowly but surely fade away. Following the wig snatching incident, the El Faba TikTok Live grift would begin. You see, one way for fans to interact with creators on TikTok Live is to send them donations in the form of stickers that pop up on the screen when the creator is live. Not all stickers are as valuable as others. For example, a rose sticker is worth about one penny, but if someone was to donate a lion sticker, the creator would earn about $200. It's a very weird system that doesn't make a ton of sense to me personally, but uh, that's how it works in a very basic sense. El Faba's grift in the beginning was to tell her followers on TikTok Live that she would not have enough money to pay rent in order to incentivize them to send more donations. This very simple plan would work for Elphaba. As the following live stream, she would be seen shopping in a Tesco for expensive junk food and then follow that with an announcement that she was once again going to see the musical Wicked. This stream would leave the followers that sent her money during her alleged housing crisis in shock and awe. But Elphaba didn't give a f after this, she would transition into becoming a full-on TikTok sticker grifter. Cough up. I'm not singing for free. You pay me. If you want me to sing, you give me money. And it's an installer. Now that's crazy that I'm not singing. 
Singer. It's not crazy, actually. That's the standard for a singer. If you were to go to a gig, you'd pay them 100 quid. I don't give a shit what you think. Like I say, I've almost got 700,000 followers. I'm not singing for free anymore, my darling. Going on live stream constantly for extended periods of time, just farming donations. If we get like a thousand coins, and right now or something like that, we're gonna get really pushed up quick. Do you see where I'm coming from? The higher you get, the more gifts it has to be. And at a certain point, she even created a private Discord for her followers that consistently sent her high-value donations. If that doesn't sound crazy enough for you, if you weren't consistent enough for Elphaba's liking, you would be kicked from this server. There are many other Elphaba scams, like the time she said she was fundraising money for children at a hospital to give them gifts for Christmas. Instead of going through with this charitable idea, she decided to keep all the money she raised for herself. Elphaba also decided to launch a Patreon that she's only posted on one time and started a cameo that she charges $40 for lazily phoned in messages. You are absolutely amazing and um, I love you. And I heard you're sad. You're sad about your big hat. Don't forget your big hat. Uh, Incredibly, it's estimated she makes about $7,000 a month on all of these hustles combined. So really keep that in mind when we go into the next section of the video. Elfaba's hygiene. I'm sure you guys wouldn't be surprised if I told you that Elfaba here does not like to take showers or brush her teeth. It's not hard to tell that Alfaba doesn't like to shower, just take one look at her filthy skin and greasy hair. Personal hygiene is not something that she likes to keep up with. She has even stated that she's gone six months without brushing her teeth. I got a 12 pound toothpaste. I had it, I've had it for like six months, but I bought it ages ago and I've refused to use it since, but I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna start using it now. It's not even opened. On top of these facts, Alfaba is also very gassy and frequently burps and farts on TikTok Live. She also likes to show off the dandruff and bugs in her hair. Not moving, these aren't, they haven't got legs, look. I'll show you. People are just taking the piss out of me now, it's kind of rude. If that's not enough, Elfaba also claims to have cystic acne and hydradenitis superativa, or however you say that word, resulting in her back scarring to the point that it looks like this. And with this skin condition, she's unable to tuck her you know what. And if I was to tuck, it would cause me to have um, a flare up downstairs. Not being able to do this has led to multiple TikToks of Elfaba flashing up skirt. And let me tell you what, seeing this person's dick and balls was not something I was expecting to see in the making of this video. The final disgusting fact about Elfaba's hygiene is that she has scabies. I can't, I can't, I can't use the facilities in the house because I'll spread my scabies. So I can't cook, I have to order in until I'm not contagious anymore. And fun fact, I called up, they, they don't have any scaby cream in stock, so that's fun. Not only did she go multiple months without treating the infestation, she would be frequently seen on TikTok Live in public brushing shoulders with people and trying on clothes in local stores near her. It's not the f***ing coronavirus. Scabies cannot f***ing kill you. I am entitled to go where the f*** I want, thank you very much. Because I will not be sat in a box and be controlled by people and be told what to do like a f***ing child. That's right, just like Daniel Larson, who knows how many people Elfaba has spread scabies to over the last few months. These kind of people only care about themselves, man. Pushing past Elfaba's disgusting hygiene, we will now be talking about some disabilities she has been caught faking. Some of these disabilities include Tourette's and autism. Yes, she allegedly faked having autism, and she even faked her way into Autism's Got Talent 2022. What a piece of shit this person is. In 2023, Elfaba would come out and state in a TikTok live that she lied about having autism. I lied about being diagnosed with autism, correct? And that's damaging. She would also be called out on another TikTok live stream for faking Tourette's. A little bit like, wh why are you doing it? Oh, no, let me say this. So basically, I went to a GP, right? And I... I'm not talking about autism, by the way. Um, no. Okay. No, this... Yeah, no, of course, of course. Absolutely understand. Um, so sometimes I, I, I have anxiety, right? So I'm diagnosed with anxiety. 
And basically, I, I squeak and jitter um, uncontrollably sometimes. I've done it off live. My mum has seen it herself. And I, I asked the doctor, is this Tourette's? And they said they're not 100% sure. So they had to put me in, you know, um, talk wax. It's a, it's a, it's a circus. Um, let me show you. Before you carry on, can I just say that no GP would have said they w weren't sure about Tourette's because you have to be 12 no, months I, I having was... tics be, to be called Tourette's. So there's no way any GP will have said to you, we're not sure if that's Tourette's. If they oh, thought no, you no. had tics, it would be a different story. Mm -hmm. But there's no way any GP said to you, oh, uh, yeah, we're not sure if that's Tourette's. It's just not, it's just not, that's bollocks, mate. That's bollocks. No, no, I was, I was told this. I'm so sorry. I can show you my um referral if you want to see. I that. don't, I don't need to see referrals. The same as I wouldn't want anyone to ask for our referrals. But I do think that you really do need to reconsider the things that you share and the things that you say because you are actually hurting a whole community of people in various ways. And time and time you, again, you're apologising for stuff, and. You're not meaning what you're saying. Now, I've seen you on and off my For You page for quite some time, and I steer clear of all the drama, but now you've directly impacted my child who suffers with this disability. It's not a fashion sta statement, Elfa. No. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. I'm really sorry. Yep, that's right. When she's pressed, she just immediately says sorry, and, and that grift is over. The last part of Elphaba's story is very dark. She has a track record of speaking with minors online and in Discord servers. The first time she would be caught doing this would be at age 17. It was revealed Elphaba would send voice recordings and chats with children as young as 10 years old talking about touching herself and other various sexual acts. Here's a clip of her celebrating that she wouldn't get in any trouble because she was 17 and technically not an adult. I was crying as a minor so she said you're fine just don't worry about it just move on so i was like slavers yeah yeah hey, hey, hey. and i know i will have people in the comment section saying nick she was only 17 she was still a minor if you think it's okay for a 17 year old to sex 10 year olds that's your own disgusting prerogative and i think there's somebody that would be interested in talking to you how you doing Right, Give a seat over in that chair, please. She would also allegedly go on to say that she got banned from another app called Likely for touching herself on livestream in front of children. If these two things weren't bad enough, Elfaba also has a Discord that minors are definitely a part of. Here are some screenshots of Elfaba talking to one of them, and check out what she says when the minor reveals their age to them. Yeah, just openly calling minors hot and who knows how many others she's talking to. The last nasty fact about Elfaba is she likes to make a mockery of self-harm. Oftentimes she's seen on livestream hitting herself and pulling her hair out in order to gain sympathy and donations from her followers. Get that shit away from me! I can't fucking do it anymore! I can't find it! Just a few days ago, she faked a suicide attempt, which is horrendously f***ed up, and then returned to TikTok Live a few days later. Yeah, at the end of the day, this person is a disgusting pedophile that I can't believe still has a platform. Not only that, they are still on TikTok Live every night and every day just farming TikTok sticker donations. Hopefully some justice will come to this situation, but for now, this is where this story comes to an end. This was the deranged story of Elphaba. Thank you for watching my video. I would like to give a shout out to my amazing channel members. Safadil, Mad Reagan, Carson Elizabeth, John F. Kennedy, The Real LAC, Death Letters Official, Juzo Suzia, Becca, Seven, Almada Jr., D. Catkins, Boy in a Suit, Blake N., Ionis, Dad's Fishing, Dizzy Dez, Jade is Dead, Tommy G. FPV, Dez, Chris Rango, Morgan 3000, and Sentinel. And with all of that being said, I'm Nick Nobody, and until next week, I'm out.